Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Monday, April 22nd. Hope everybody enjoyed their weekend. Last week, we had our largest weekly pullback for 2013. That marked an outside week reversal on the weekly charts. We're going to get into that. We have a lot of charts and indicators to go over. Russell led the sector lower, uh, all of the sectors lower, actually, uh, along with the semiconductors, as you can see here. On the board, 3.2% lower. Semiconductors, 3.84% lower. And we're pretty much green across the board. And if you see, except biotechs, drugs, and utilities. That is not what you want to see if you're a bull. And I'm going to show that, uh, show those charts to you as well. These are the only things that are green, except, of course, some of the grains and uh, U.S. dollar up, natural gas up. But, uh, again, big factor here is what you see right up in here is that we have biotechs, drugs, healthcare, and uh, utilities up on the week. That's not a good sign. Money's running into the safe haven sectors. We also have economic numbers are starting deteriorating, showing signs of weakening. Also, uh, we have about 150 large cap companies that reported, uh, and they are missing revenues. 50% of them have missed revenues. That is also not a good sign as well, along with the uh, safe haven sectors, consumer staples, healthcare, and utilities showing inflow. So uh, we see deterioration happening in the marketplace here, and uh, this is just signs. Now, can, can the market just turn around and go higher? Absolutely. But... What we're doing and, and what I've done here on my analysis tells me that we could be in for a good 8 or 10% correction in the coming weeks and months. And we are in a seasonal time of weakness in the market, in the equity market. So just a big red flag, a big warning sign. Uh, markets have been grinding higher for the good part of uh, uh, 2013, at least the first quarter. Um, and, you know, it can't go up like this forever. And I kept mentioning that although uh, markets had a good run, they did grind higher on no volume. So now we want to see what's, what is going to happen. What are the markets, what are the stocks telling us? What are the charts telling us? What's price action telling us? And uh, we want to try to get a little bit of that advantage um, moving forward, going forward. Okay, so we have a lot of stuff to go over, and I want to um, I want to run over, uh, go over a few things here. So the performance board here doesn't look that great. Now Friday we did have we managed to move up, and we are trading higher right now in the pre market, about six uh, six handles higher in the minis. Um, to me, that doesn't mean much of anything, uh, but we will see how this market fares the beginning of the week. Wouldn't surprise me if the markets grind higher or a little. A little higher today maybe tomorrow and then the markets start getting into some selling pressure again uh, at certain levels but we're going to show you what levels to look for uh, what the support levels are going to be and that's going to be a great uh, uh, indicator to tell us okay price is moving low when we broke some key resistance uh, and excuse me key support areas so that's something that we're going to uh, uh, make a point here in this um, in this segment okay the NIMO um, hasn't done much here, as you can see. All of 2013 has been in this range here. But what is this telling? What, what this is telling me is that we have plenty of room to run to the upside and/or to the downside. So we're basically see a marked on a neutral uh, bias for the moment. But if the markets do sell off, this uh, NIMO has plenty of room before it gets oversold, and that's what I wanted to point out to you. Now let's take a look at copper weekly copper, uh, and I bring this up almost every day and I want to tell you that this is leading the markets lower and will lead the markets lower uh, copper as well as you see the Russell um, healthcare moving higher these are all indicators telling me the markets are pointing lower and uh, copper weekly out of the symmetrical triangle we broke the key pivotal area of 340 we are now broke below the 324 the next area is going to be is going to be three dollars no question about it why not get there you're only a couple of points away close at 315 you're 15 cents away why not get there and then you really need to reevaluate now we are oversold coppers due for an oversold bounce here take a look at the daily chart now this is the daily copper we had a big hammer candle we took it right back the next day almost two-thirds of it so um copper there's telling me that there's, uh, I think that there's worldwide uh, slowdown. Uh, growth in, uh, in some of these uh, emerging markets are slowing down. No question about it. And this is what copper chart is telling me. Now, we can get an oversold bounce. We can bounce up to 330 again and still be in a downtrend. This, this is clearly in a downtrend. So big warning sign here, guys, in copper. Um, that's a, a really, really big 
uh, a big red flag for me anyway. Here's the NASI Weekly. Uh, NASI Weekly has been in a, uh, on a sell signal for three weeks. And uh, I, like I said before, this is a great indicator. Did have a little bit of chop here, but this is a great indicator pick in the bottom. Plenty of room to run before this market gets over um, oversold. So again, weekly NASI telling me that this market is moving lower. Okay, uh, bullish percent, SPX. As you can see here, uh, we made lower highs, lower highs as the market was running higher. Um, I had pointed this out several weeks ago. And now the markets are starting to break down again. Now trying to trying to recapture some of these uh, key pivotal um, uh, support, which is now resistance of 1560. So we'll just take a look. But this here not good at all. Here's the SPX ATR, and I've showed this to you many times. And uh, when we have low volatility, more ATR runs down. Um, obviously makes sense now that we have volatility starting to creep up into the markets again we have our ATR moving higher so this could actually as you can see here you know as we run down in the ATR markets run higher as we run up markets run are lower here here markets are lower now we're starting to move up again so um, can this chop around a little bit sure can it get back down to 13 14 and then really spike higher absolutely so we are still in an uptrend right you can see this here clearly we are still in, an, in the uptrend in November and I'll show that to you on the regular daily chart take a look at the SPX versus copper copper leading this market lower you can see here no question about it SPX versus the copper as you can see we have more strength in in, uh, in the SPX than we do in copper um, so this is not a good sign here guys this is definitely not a good sign and definitely not what you want to see if you're a bull and again markets need a correction markets uh, it's healthy for the markets to correct a little bit we can't continue to just grind higher all the way since November on very little pullbacks one to two day pullbacks you need some sort of a deeper retracement in order for it to unwind its overbought reading in our indicators okay take a look at the um, stocks above the 50 day moving average I pointed this out for several weeks as well and as you can see we're breaking down so what I was mentioning to you I said stocks aren't moving the ETFs are moving so um, market participants and uh, traders are buying more of the ETFs and that was pushing the S&P higher versus stocks that are not moving and that's what was so frustrating to say is that you know stocks are either moving very little in the direction of the of the trend uh, but the ETFs are moving much higher so if you're not an ETF player on your, your trade individual stocks you're not really doing too much and that's what I was mentioning for weeks and weeks but now we're breaking down we broke this key, key pivotal 60 60 20 and now we're at 47 percent um, as you can see here we did move up a little higher on Friday but n nearly not as much as what we need to we need to really get above back above 80 75 80 to really make, continue this trend to make stocks that are really moving higher so this market to move higher but uh, this is not happening as the moment at the moment so this is uh, telling me another red flag here now let's take a look at our um, our XLP our safe haven sectors right we got consumer staples money rolling into it all-time highs take a look at that now we have a utilities same thing with utilities all-time highs continue money continues to flow in into these safe haven sectors and we have healthcare here took a little pullback but look at this um, on Friday back up again still at lofty levels market uh, cash flow is going right into all of the cash that we see that's coming out of these uh, uh, risk on correlated assets such as the Russell are moving into these utilities healthcare consumer discretionary sectors not again another good another uh, another sign that the markets are um, at these lofty levels and are due for some sort of a correction pullback now uh, just real quick SPY spider 10 minute I just want to show you what I see here and again this is only a 10 minute chart I do see a small inverted head and shoulders on a 10 minute. I just wanted to point that out before we get into the longer term charts um, I know it's but you can see what happened here we had a pullback on uh, on the 17th and then we uh, just kind of rolled over here made our low and then now we're uh, trekking higher. So we do have a small inverted head and shoulders on a 10 minute chart. And I wanted to show that to you first, but uh, again, it's only a 10 minute, so could it, it only uh, could last maybe several hours to a day, if anything. Okay, so let's get into our now, our, uh, our real market analysis here. SPY cash, the S&P 500 cash weekly bar, um, and I have nothing but just real simple trend lines here, no moving averages. As you can see, we have an outside week reversal bar uh, from we took back the previous week. Now. To me, this is going to be a critical week. This week and next week will be critical. We just we took out our um, our options expiration. We and I I mentioned it to, on Thursday and Friday morning. Uh, sure enough, we ended up positive uh, on the week. Uh, so uh, excuse me on the day. 
rightfully so, I, to be expected. This usually does happen. But now we want to see, does the trend continue lower, or do we uh, recapture a lot of that move that we uh, lost, and then the markets move higher again? Can it, can it do that? Absolutely. But we want to just uh, see what price does, and then follow along with price, okay? Indicators are secondary. They lag, as you know. Okay, now let's get our daily chart. And as you can see here, 15... 1560 really is going to need to get back above here at 1560 area. Um, 1555, 1560, that's going to be the spot where I'd like to see the markets move back higher and then ultimately break back above the 1575 area. Um, I think it has a lot of work to do, but again, um, this is where we are. And mark the 1530 as, as your support area. That's going to be the area that we need to really break down below. Okay, 1530 is going to be the ideal support line break. And that's going to tell me that the markets are definitely going to be headed at least down to the 1495 area. And then our first target would be 1475. Now I have this here for, uh, for at least a couple of months, but I just want to show you this is my anticipation of where I think the markets would be headed if we do break lower. Okay, this is the S&P uh, daily, this is the spiders, this is what I like to do our analysis with, a lot of people follow the spiders, same thing, it's a, a proxy to the S&P 500, um, this low is going to be key, this is going to be the key spot right here, it's going to be that low, 153.50, needs to break, that's last week's low, if indeed it does break that, then take a look at the spot of 148.90, and then, of course, the 200-day moving average will be the big, t big downside target. Um, does it get there? Too early to tell, but let's keep an eye on, the, on our, our um, low from last week. That's going to be a spot. And this is it right here, 153.75. As you can see here, we had marked in the arrows three spots. I think there's actually four if you look here. And that's going to be that gap up. This is going to be a real important area where a lot of people will be looking for for the markets to break lower. If indeed that does break lower, um, I think all bets are off to the upside for at least several weeks, and then we're going to have that little retracement that we're looking for. 151.50 will be the spot for now. That's the first target. Here's the 30-minute chart. I uh, just want to show that to you uh, in our um, retracement, on our Fibonacci retracements. Uh, we held the 61.8% I mentioned early last week uh, to a really almost to the penny uh, and then we actually started rolling back down again so that area is going to be important 153.75 make sure you please mark that in your in your charts uh, when you're trading during the week and then of course we have some deeper downside targets 149.90 148.65 that's the 30 minute spiders okay here is the uh, diamonds diamonds actually uh, believe it or not held up well uh, better than the other sectors um, and it's just so funny how a lot of money was going into the uh, Dow Jones, uh, a lot of the brick and mortar Dow 30 stocks. But anyway, uh, we did hold here and we held this little area. We had that little sideways consolidation. This is the area that we'll be looking for, and that's going to be that's going to co coincide nicely with the 50-day moving average. A break below this area, 143.60, call it, and the diamonds look for further downside, uh, at least down to this 139.140 area in um, in the diamonds. And here is the IWNs leading the market lower. Uh, this is not what you want to see, guys. A good gauge of risk on. Uh, really healthy for the markets when uh, when the Russell leads, the copper leads. Uh, that has not been the case. These sectors have actually uh, retraced lower. So um, interesting to see what happens. If you could see here, every time we have a distribution, we have large red candles uh, where we have, when we have accumulation day, we have small green candles. That's not what you want to see. Anyway, this is the area, 89.30. Eight, I, let's call it 89.20. 89.20, eh, 89.15. I'll make it 89.15 here. That's the spot right here for the Russell to break lower. 89.15, put that in your, uh, in your notes. If that breaks lower and coincides with the other breakdown of the other sectors that we pointed out, I'd be looking for lower uh, prices uh, to come. And if that's the case, then we'll be putting on some shorts. And I like looking – I like – trading the meat of the move I'm not looking to pick a top I like to get the meat of the move as we break lower um, I'm looking for a bigger target than looking to get chopped up in here trying to pick a top and uh, and losing money that's not that's uh, not part of trading that's not what you want to do let's see if we get that tradable top here once we get that top is confirmed then we can actually uh, sit comfortably in our short positions Okay, transportation, another breakdown here. This is not good for the market, especially our leader breaking down. Now, we did get a nice big day on Friday, so we took back most of the week. But this is the week. This is the spot 
what we're going to be looking for, 104.75 in the transports. 104.75, a break of the support area, is going to tend to break to lead this market lower, um, and probably uh, um, quickly, rather quickly, uh, lower. Okay, Apple. All right, guys, um, apples. So I get a few emails. Um, okay, Mark, it's just apples at 390. Did we start looking to accumulate? Well, that's really up to your trading plan of what you're looking to do. What, what, I don't know. I'm not sure of how big you're looking to accumulate. Um, I think here you're at 390. We did break the 400. We had the 400 pin. Um, at least uh, we had an idea that the pin would be 400. It ended up being 390, but uh, from the 426 call on Monday, I said look for a 400 pin. That was a pretty good call. A lot of people made some good money on those puts. Uh, congratulations. Uh, now, we're at 390. Where do we go? The 200-day moving average at 370. Um, could we get a flush lower? Sure. I think we are getting oversold here, though. I am looking for some sort of a bounce. Probably a dead cat bounce up to the uh, you know 420 area, 430 area, um, but I think this could go either way, so I think you have to really kind of watch this thing. We're at the 200-day moving average. If the if if the price gets to the 200-day moving average, I would definitely be looking to um, buy some Apple in this area, okay? But let's see where, what what happens next day or two if we do happen to retrace back this candle. Now, usually we do get a, a good retracement back to the 410. So if you're looking to play a tradable bounce for the day, then yes, then I'd be looking for a spot to trade. Um, if you're looking to accumulate, I'd hold off a little bit longer just to see where we are, unless you're looking to buy something real small to accumulate down to the 375 the 350 area okay uh, here's that's the weekly chart daily chart just to show you that we did break down here and we are definitely oversold um, I think Apple's gonna need to come up with some products uh, and some announcements and that's not really I think coming into uh, I believe the third quarter so between now and the summer I think Apple will just start carving out a bottom here uh, with not much movement you might get a couple of pops here and there but I think uh, I think really the move was gonna happen probably at the end of the summer when they start announcing some on uh, some new products on their product line uh, but anyway take a look at this uh, keep an eye on it if you're looking at it. it's getting more interesting as Apple starts to sell off SMA just want to show you uh, really not much going on here here we're still uh, in a downtrend as you can see clearly so we're gonna need to really get back above 3550 uh, and here's the weekly cues still in this big bearish rising wedge uh, outside week reversal uh, let's see what happens with the cues and here's just the daily chart of the cues all right guys um, a little bit long in the video I wanted to get a couple of points out to you guys I do see a correction coming um, how big and how deep we're not sure yet we still need to uh, price needs to start breaking down and we're gonna see the nature of the uh, of the pullback if it is it fast and furious there's a lot of volume behind it we could be looking for a deeper retracement but as of right now uh, we are looking for a pullback uh, we are looking for a top to be formed here we probably know more this week have a great week and I'll speak to you tomorrow take care everybody